So we're going to talk a little bit about the, the neurology exam itself. Um, we've spoken about the conduction elements, we've spoken about the mobility elements, they're important. This will be the conduction element, and this is usually the one that um, everybody gets quite scared about, and there isn't really any need for it. It's, it's basically a special test for the lumbar spine, because not everybody's going to need, uh, need it. If somebody's got pain radiating down below the sort of deltoids, that's when you would want to look at them, uh, the neurology. It consists of the dermatomes and the myotomes that we're going to go over now. One easy way of remembering this, and um, I hold my hands up, I recently learned this, so it's quite, uh, quite a useful way of remembering how to do dermatomes. If we kind of like look at the body as a clock, that is clockwise, and that is counterclockwise or anticlockwise for us English. If we take the the client or patient's arm out, and what we want to do is when we're looking at them from the front, we're going to go in a counter or anticlockwise direction. So the dermatomes, we're just going to follow them in that direction. So we'll take a, a little bit of um, cotton wool and we will follow through the dermatomes. Now one thing before we we carry on with dermatomes is that if you just relax first of all as I've said before they uh, depending on what what drawings you read which book you're going to which anatomy book they can vary so there's quite a lot of overlap that's the first thing. The second thing is if you're testing a dermatome and you're just in checking one dermatome there you really need to know whether that's been compromised or not working as well. And the only other way you can do it is by checking the other side. It's not the only other way you can do it. That doesn't really help if you've got a problem that's sort of working both sides of the, the spine and both nerve roots have been irritated or something, the spinal cord. So it's easier to either test on another part of the body, say for example the leg, or to go in and out of the dermatome. So before we run through the dermatomes, if for example I'm talking about C5 here. If I test C5 and T2 by going in and out and they say oh I don't feel it so much here but I do feel it okay here that gives you an indication that maybe something's going on that's C5 dermatome. So often it's easier just to go in and out of the dermatome as well as along its length. We're going to do the dermatome. We can start up here C3 C4, C5, C6, C7, C8, T1, T2, T3. As you see, I've, I've gone in a counterclockwise direction. I can be just checking here again C3, C4, C5, and maybe I can go C4 and chest here or C4, T2 just to get an idea if there's something going on there. But again we'll go C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8, T1, T1, T2, T3. We can do it with the, uh, the little hammer that I was showing you with the pinwheel. I, uh, from what I understand there have been a few people have been actually sued because of those things. <laughs> no one's ever heard about that. I never used it. It always seemed quite a vicious little tool almost medieval in its, uh, in its makeup, but it does give you quite a nice uh, way if you know how you're using it to sort of roll around the dermatomes and, and affect them. So that's the dermatomes for the, uh, the upper quadrant. Now, with the myotomes, there's different ways we can do it. I'm going to stand here and do it unilaterally, but you can try and do it bilaterally, but at some point you're going to end up doing it unilaterally. So I, I personally how I prefer, I, I sometimes jump between the different ones, but for, for the sake of filming, for the ease of understanding, we will just do it in one, on one limb, and uh, one side, uh, rather than limb, and then, uh, and then you, would, you could go to the other side and test it. You can try and do it bilaterally, and there is a, um, a definitely an advantage to that, because you can actually feel what's going on from side to side. So initially, I will get the... Uh, the patient uh, to uh, the upper cervical flexion, pulling their chin in. So that most people are not going to know what upper cervical flexion is um, if you hit them with a brick. So you say, pull your chin in. 
So you're going to pull your chin in. You can try, if I just get you to relax, relax. Do it again, pull your chin in, and you can try and add some sort of resistance to it. That's C1. C2, chin poke, pushing your chin out, and just go back to normal, and chin poke, and I can give a little bit of resistance. That's C1 and C2. C3, side flexion, so if you're going to bend your head towards me, to your side, and take back to the other side. Now this time I want you to just push your hand in, in your head into my hand, and relax. C4, shoulder girdle elevation, lift your shoulder up. C5, they're going to lift their, their arm up to the side, or abduction, so you lift your arms out to the side and hold. C6, hold your hand out here, and they're going to bend their hand up. So this is elbow flexion of the biceps. C7, just turn your hands around, push down. C8, I just want you to lift your thumb up. And C1, close your fingers on my fingers. And relax. So now we can just look how we could try and do that bilaterally. As I said, there's advantages to it. So if I just get you to pull your chin in, that's upper cervical flexion or C1. If I can just get you to take your chin out, that's upper cervical extension or, or C2. And again, you can just push your chin out into my hand. It gives you a little bit of resistance. C3, take your head to the right hand side. Take your head to the left hand side. C4, Lift your shoulders up. Now the, the beauty of doing this is simply that if she's weak on one side, it's going to tell me what's going on. So that was C4. C5, bring your arms out to the sides. And this is shoulder abduction, C5. Take your arms down. Take your arms like this. Now this is where it becomes a little more complicated. Sometimes you do have to run around the patient a little bit. In my case you would. In case of this model, I can do both really easy. That was C6 biceps, C7 triceps. Uh, C8, I can do from here again if, if I want, like this, and just open your fingers for T1 and close. So that's how you can do it bilaterally, obviously. I'm doing it facing the camera so you can see my pretty face. But ordinarily, I'd actually be looking at the, f uh, the face of the patient and have my back to what would be the camera. Um, so I can see if there's anything going on uh, with their eyes or their mouth if they're grimacing or anything like that. The final conduction element is to test the reflexes. You can do this in sitting or lying. Um, sometimes lying is a, it unloads the neural tissue so it's easier to do. But basically what you're going to do is try and get a tendon reflex stretch. So you put the tendon under a little bit of tension with your thumb and then just give it a little whack like that and you saw them jump up. If I do that again, she's probably not going to jump as much. She does actually, it's quite fun. I don't usually <laughs> succeed with this. But after a while, she's not going to have the, um, the same sort of response because her nervous tissue is going to accommodate. The other way to do it as well is also for the um, triceps. And again, often you're just looking for a little twitch of the muscle to tell you what's going on. So they're the reflex tests for the, for the upper quadrant.